Nate stood very still. Are you a pirate? Nate asked. Yes, the voice said. A pirate. I want my treasure. Nate's heart lifted up. He whirled around to face his attacker, three-year-old Theo, Eliza's little boy. He was waving his pirate sword, a spindly stick from the cherry tree. Theo was supposed to be napping and out of Storch's sight, but here he was, wide awake. You are very fierce, Nate told his friend. Theo stood proudly, his brown eyes gleaming like polished gold. He'd been wild about pirates for months now, ever since Nate started telling him stories about his adventures at sea. Theo waved his stick sword. Arg! he shouted out in his most pirate-like voice. Nate grabbed Theo around the waist and picked him up. Theo's happy giggles rose up, whooshing over Nate like a breeze. Seconds later, Eliza came rushing out of the house, her skirt swirling around her shoes. Eliza had Theo's same dark brown skin and big bright eyes. But unlike Theo, Eliza wasn't smiling. You both need to hush, she warned, looking toward the house. You know what he could do if he hears? He, of course, was Storch. He had no patience for giggling and even less for Theo himself. Eliza's worst nightmare was that Storch would sell Theo just like he'd sold Eliza's husband, Gregory, a few months before Nate arrived. Eliza rarely talked about Gregory. It hurt her too much, Nate knew. But she had told Nate a few things about her husband, that he was joyful like Theo and had those same bright eyes. That one hour went by without her missing him. What a fool Nate was, getting Theo all riled up. Luckily, Storch was probably too busy cursing George Washington to notice Theo's giggles. Mama, Theo said very quietly, I pirate. Eliza's eyes softened and she and Nate shared a little smile. Even pirates have to be quiet, Eliza said, kissing Theo on the nose, or they get into trouble. Storch's voice bellowed from the house, cake. I'll keep this pirate out of trouble, Nate promised. Eliza rushed inside to serve Storch and his friend. Theo put his face close to Nate's. Tell a pirate story, Theo begged. Tell about Slash. Slash was Slash O'Shea, the greatest living pirate. Nate had grown up hearing Papa's stories about Slash, and Nate had shared most of them with Theo. Slash got his name from the dagger strapped to the stump where his hand it used to be. Some pirates were nothing more than low-life thieves. They captured ships and stole everything they could. They murdered anyone who got in their way. Not Slash. He'd never killed a man, and he gave some of his treasure away, mostly to orphans. He'd sneak into cities disguised in ragged beggar's clothes and hand out gold coins to kids living on the streets. I'll tell you a Slash story later, said Nate. How about a song? A grin spread across Theo's face. He loved when Nate sang shanties, the song sailors crooned as they did their work. Nate sang Theo, one of Papa's favorites, about the sun rising up over the sea. Soon enough, Theo's eyes were closed. Nate gently pried the, pried the stick sword from Theo's hand. He lifted his little friend up and carried him to a soft patch of grass. Then Nate went back to his weeds and worms. Starch and Marston had finished their cake and were puffing on cigars. They were still talking about the war. Don't worry, my friend. This war will be over soon, Storch was saying. The king sent hundreds of ships. The big battle is coming any day. Washington and his army of traitors will soon be crushed. Marston nodded his jowly face in agreement. Nate didn't pay much attention to the war. He understood what it was about, whether the 13 American colonies should stay a part of England or become a country of their own. He remembered the late night talks on top of ships. Nate would lie in his hammock and listen to Papa and the men griping about England and King George. There was no mention of a war back then. Most of the men were proud that America was part of England, the most powerful country on earth. But they hated paying so many taxes. The extra money England made the colonists pay when they bought things like tea and paper. They'd started to see King George as a bully who didn't care about the people who lived in the colonies. Their fiery discussions would last deep into the night. Nate would struggle to stay awake. He never wanted to miss a word of what they were saying. 
But now Nate didn't care about King George. It didn't matter to him who won the war. Whatever happened, he was pretty sure Eliza and Theo would still be slaves. Papa would still be gone and Nate would be stuck here pulling up Stork's weeds. Nate stopped listening to Stork and Marston. Time crawled by. The front door banged open and Mr. Marston walked out to his waiting carriage. Stork stood outside and waved goodbye as he puffed on a cigar. It was right then that Nate realized that Theo wasn't asleep in the grass anymore. Nate scanned the yard until he spotted the little boy. He was next to the house, just a few yards from Storch. Theo had found a new pirate sword, an enormous stick, almost as big as he was. He was spinning around and around like a top. The stick whipped around with him. Storch had his back turned and couldn't see Theo. Just then, Theo stumbled. The stick slipped from his hand. It flew surprisingly fast like a spear and it was heading right for Storch's head. Nate's heart stopped. He opened his mouth to scream out a warning, but it was too late. Black! The stick smacked Storch right on the back of his head. He cursed in pain, and then Nate's uncle fell to the ground like an empty sack. I mean, what he deserves, but... Yeah. And now we actually know that... <laughs> Chapter four, Nate's mind swirled. He was afraid he might vomit. It wasn't Stork's moans of pain that sickened him. It was knowing what would happen to Theo. Storch would sell him for sure. Eliza would lose him forever, just like she'd lost her husband, Gregory. Nate rushed over to Theo, who was trying to hide behind the cherry tree. Nate lifted Theo up and hugged him close. Eliza was on the porch now, bending down to help Storch. Eliza looked up. She spotted Nate and Theo. Her eyes locked with Nate's. And in that split second, Nate could see she understood exactly what had happened. Nate had to get Theo out of here. Don't worry, Nate whispered to Theo. I won't let anything happen to you. But Nate's words seemed to scatter in the wind. Of course, he couldn't just run off with Theo. Theo wasn't just any little boy. He was a slave. To Storch, Theo wasn't a person. He was valuable property. Storch wouldn't just let him go. He'd hire slave catchers. He'd offer a fat reward. He'd never stop looking. There was nothing Nate could do to help Theo unless, next up, an idea flickered in Nate's mind like a little flame. Storch hadn't seen Theo throw the stick, had he? His back had been turned. What if Nate could trick Storch into thinking someone else had thrown the stick? then Theo would be safe. Nate put Theo down. Run behind the barn, Nate whispered. Never tell anyone what happened with that stick. You come too, Theo said, clinging to Nate's arm. Soon, Nate said, struggling to keep his voice steady. He hated lying to Theo, but he had no choice. Theo turned and dashed away. Nate stood up with clenched fists and shaking legs. Nate made his way to where Storch was now sitting up. Eliza was pressing a rag to his bleeding head. I'm sorry, sir, he said. It was an accident. The stick slipped from my hand. Nate, Eliza whispered. Storch struggled to his feet, glaring at Nate with fury. If Storch's eyes had been cannons, they would have blasted Nate into the sky. He lunged forward. Smack! He slapped Nate across the face. Nate staggered back. His face felt like he'd been scalded with boiling waters. Tears sprang into Nate's eyes, tears of relief. That slap meant that Storch believed him, that Theo was safe, at least for now. But Nate was not. Storch lunged forward and grabbed Nate by the throat. His hands were like iron claws. With his bulging eyes and blood-smeared face, Storch looked like a sea monster from Nate's worst nightmares. Nate struggled but couldn't break free from the choking grip. Eliza screamed, but the voice inside Nate's mind screamed louder. He's going to kill me. With his last ounce of strength, Nate whipped his arm up and bashed his fist into the side of Storch's head. Storch lost his grip and fell back. Nate took one last look at Eliza. Go, she mouthed. Nate turned and ran. Oh, oh.